Shut up and sit down. Hi uh, guys, welcome to Big Mech's workshop and paint studio and this is part two of how to paint a Gorkonut. Currently I'm just airbrushing the knee kneecaps that uh, go on the Gorkonut's legs. Um, same technique as was used in the first video, but I wanted to show you how I was doing these lines on here. Uh, the black at the bottom is where the squiggly line is going to stop. Then I put a rough copy of it on using the Windsor Newton Series 7 double zero because it gives a nice fine line and I did switch back and forth doing these between the small brush by Games Workshop and the Windsor Newton series 7. Showing you the shoulder pad here was done in the same technique as on the first video as well but we're currently making some progress we're going to do the same thing for the face plate which I decided would be a different colour because um, there's a lot of yellow and the way it's been done on this broken up kind of overpowering so I needed to break that up a bit. As you can see I painted the back of the, the, the headpiece yellow like the, the orcs have just gathered up something else that's white I thought that'll look good stick it on as a skull. It's very orky. Um, then what we're going to do is water down some burnt umber and coat that ever so slightly. You're just putting a fine misting on there. And I finally got around to deciding which parts were going to do the other metallics and what I used was Warblock Bronze by Games Workshop. This is going to cover the majority of the other metallics. The pistons were done in this colour, um, dials, uh, what else, control panels, all sorts of stuff like that. Uh, just to break it up because it, that silver is quite overpowering as well. We're doing the springs, starting off with a hammered copper by model colour then going over it with a bright brass by model colour just over the centre of the coils you don't want to get into any of the recesses or anything <coughs> it's a bright highlight but we're going to wash it down and filter it twice with two games workshop washers try not to water your paint down too much for this because it will run off the smooth surface and into, your, into the grooves of the spring which is not what you want. I've also done the springs on the side pistons there as well on the claws. Now we're using a Reclam Flesh Shade by Games Workshop and what you can do is just run this across there and it will you know, run and pull into that area but don't go over the top with that because if you put too much on the Reclam Flesh Shade is going to flood that bit and it's going to pour out and you're going to end up with a slightly red stain all over the yellow which is not something you're going to want right now after doing all that airbrush work and everything else. Decided I want a little bit more depth so I'm now going to use a watered down Agrax Earthshade Wash like 50-50 Agrax and Lamia Medium by Games Workshop and this pretty much gave the result I was looking for a red, reddish copper that looks a little bit weathered but you know it's moving around so it's, some of the shine still comes through. If anyone's seen the Screamer video you've seen a variation of doing horns this way but this is a, a different version because I'm going to end up taking this Gorkonaut to games day so I thought I may as well do a bit of a better job on this. And it was a bit of a colour experiment as well so I started with the Dryad Bark by Games Workshop which is a really good colour for starting your horns to be honest on the warm palette so it works really well for this coconut. Then we're going to do Zandri Dust. Now you can, even if you don't have a steady hand, you can still do this because the way it's filtered, will, um, it'll distract the eye from any unsmooth lines that you've done because you'll see the horn as a whole. And what we're going to do is start about halfway down and pull all the way back to the tip of the horn, letting the paint get thicker as it builds up. You could honestly do this with one stroke after the results I got. Like I said, it was a bit of an experiment. It's not really smooth, but um, I find horns this big and at this angle, they're just awkward to do. As you can see, that's a second layer of the same colour on there. Don't go all the way to the bottom because we're going to let that fade out. So you want the least amount of paint at the bottom of the horn, bringing it up to the top. And you can see I've rinsed and repeated the same process wasn't happy with the lines but because we're at this step I just went in with a dryad bark and pulled the brush the other way for a sharp line and neatened them up a little bit. You can do this next step whether or not you have an airbrush um, but after neatening them up <coughs> we're actually going to go ahead and use the next highlight 
which would be a shabti bone. And I know it looks terrible at this point, but just wait till it's finished. Starting halfway down, we're going to leave the Ashabti bone at the bottom of the horn showing through. And we're going to put this highlight on previously, and the reason, like beforehand, the reason is when we put the next layer of paint over the top, the Ashabti bone is going to shine through ever so slightly, so you'll have not only a good blend there, you'll also have a highlight for where you put your brush next time, sort of a guideline. And once that's all done, and it's highlighted, I went to my airbrush and I just put Zandri dust through the whole thing. Now it's really watered down and you build it up in layers but as you can see there, those uh, not so smooth lines start to blend with the background. You can do this if you just water your wash, if you water it down so you've got a wash sort of consistency. Hold the horn at an angle and wash the paint to the very tip. You'll still get a very similar result, you don't have to use an airbrush for this. It, does make it a little bit quicker though, even with the airbrush, these took a long time to do. As you can see that's starting to blend all of that together now, it's just, which I thought was odd, it's blending the same colour, I'm putting the same colour through the airbrush that I previously used, but it just blends the whole thing. Now we're going to go back to the Ushab T-Bone again, because we want to brighten that up a bit, and as you can see I'm using the lines that are already on there as a guideline, which makes it so much easier to do at this point. As you can see, my lines didn't start off too neat, but they um, start neatening up, getting a bit smoother, and they look a lot better for it to be honest. I'll probably try this technique with some different colours in some other videos and uh, see what I can come up with. Now we've re-highlighted it, I'm going to do the same thing again with the airbrush, but this time a little bit of a, shab a shabty bone. Uh, really watered down, building that up in layers around the edge. You can just rinse and repeat this technique with any colours and take it as high as you want to take it. You could go all the way to Screaming Skull if you wanted to. And you'd have a really nice transition all the way through. I was really chuffed with the way these ones came out. But because I'm doing a really dirty, a dirty coconut, I don't know what a dirty coconut is, I wanted to uh, tone it down, so I used some army paint at Strong Tone, um, just to blend those even more, and the Shabti Bone was a bit too bright for what I wanted. It gave the right effect, so now I'm just going to put a filter on it. If you liked the colour that you got, you could just stay there, it's not an issue, you don't need to do the washes. Then Lamiat Medium and Agrax Earth Shade, because it was still a bit too bright. But in hindsight, putting the whole model together now, looking at it, yeah, I probably could have just left it with the um, strong army paint and strong tone. I'm also not too concerned at this point about the Agrax Earth Shade and Lamiat Medium sort of pulling up because if it pulls up at the bottom, that's where you want your darkest and most brown recesses anyway. You obviously don't want to flood it, but a little bit of pooling there is not going to hurt it. Now again, we're switching back to the warp block bronze because that was my other trim colour. It seemed to work out quite well, rather than putting copper all over everything. There's a lot of warm colours in this palette, the oranges, yellows, reds for cables. But um, this colour, it's, it is on the warm palette, but it's dark and uh, needed something that wasn't just black. And then again, I'm doing a Lamia Medium and Agrax Shade Wash, which Gives a really cloudy effect over the warpstone bronze. Almost tints it like a um, very slight purple. It sort of, it sort of weathers it. To be honest, it looks like it's been left out in the rain, but without being over the top weathering. It's just a very subtle filter over the top. I kind of like the results of it. Now most of the cables were done in gory red. I may come back to those in the second part of the video, or well, the third part of the video at this point, because. Uh, it's taken a long time to make these videos <clears throat> and the reason it's taking so long and there's not as much good footage in it is because it's a lot of the same thing repeated. Now, I did the uh, jaw the same way that I did the uh, faceplate and I decided that all the white there was just a bit too much it needs to be toned down and mixed up a bit. So I uh, started painting the main teeth, started painting them with black primer by Vallejo. 
I think the heat from my lights starting to uh, muck with that to be honest because I've got it really close at this point for videos and I think it's drying quicker than it should. I then highlighted them with model colour German Grey which is my new favourite highlight for black. I then did the chipping and then did the silver. Remember to do it in that order guys because if you do your chipping when you've got your silvers on, that silver is going to spread and get into places and just stick there and you can't really get it out. It also affects your washes quite a lot. So you want to do your silvers last. And again, a very, very fine filter of uh, Burnt Umber by Monocolor. This is brilliant for what we're doing here. As you can see, you can barely see it going on there. It's just a very light tint of orange, but with all the other colours, it's going to bring everything together and look like a collection of rust. And Andy just got into the studio. Morning, Andy. Hello. And I went ahead and painted the uh, teeth black as well. Uh, same again. Ignore him, it's rubbish. <laughs> Shut up, Andy. Uh, so I painted the other teeth black. I was going to leave them white. It just didn't look right when the model was put together. Um, because it's bad moons, me and Andy were having a chat about what to do with his teeth. I decided to use a brass by Model Colour and paint the one of the teeth gold. Because they're bad moons, they're essentially the space orc pirates of the universe. And I thought that'll add a little bit more character to it, as well as the scratches through the eye plates and stuff. So sort of has a very piratey feel now. You want to make sure you water this one down. It has a tendency to clump up quite a bit and do it in several layers. And then of course to finish off that I will do an Agrac third shade wash. I'll probably do more to it because it's a bit filtered. Now I've put more of the burnt umber on. But um, I've been putting burnt umber on in between each layer that way it's blending everything ever so slightly and then when I do an oil wash and everything else later on that will sharpen all those edges up and really bring the whole figure together. And I think this is the last bit of footage uh, for this video. Uh, sorry it's taken so long. Check us out on Patreon. If you like the video, hit like and uh, subscribe. We've got plenty more coming out, guys. Alright, catch you in the next one. Bye.